We are back with another do not play and this one is for Veiled Experts. The reason this is a do not play is because this game is free to play or it's free to download and then you can play it or whatever. You don't have to pay any money to actually play the game up front. However, down the line they have said they're going to add in a battle pass system to add more depth to the game. But this game is absolutely awful. It focuses on a bomb defusal mode. And there are two variants of it. You've got a 3v3, you've got 5v5. In the 3v3, you're playing a best of seven, so it's first to four rounds wins. And in the 5v5, it's best of nine, so first to five rounds wins. Then you also have team deathmatch, and this is a third person shooter. But this has mechanics from about 100 different video games, all just mix and matched into one to see if they could pull off something that would attract people. And it's currently sitting a mix, I think it's had about 600 reviews or something. And it's just, it's not a very good game whatsoever. And I don't think it ever will be in the future. For a start, you have characters in terms of like, they're something like you would see in Overwatch. It is like heroes sort of thing. But these characters have skills or abilities, whatever you want to call them. And some of them are based on RNG. For an example, the first character you see, the one at the top of the character select screen, has an 85% chance when using the skill has an 85% chance to heal for 5 HP and has a 15% chance to heal for 50 HP. You get 100 health in this game, then you get three armor plates, which are all 50 each. So essentially it's 250, but your health pool is limited to 100 and you have an 85% chance of healing for 5% of your health and you have a 15% chance of healing for 50. So it's an RNG based skill or ability that you have for a character. But me and Lewis sat there, we chose a character, went through the tutorial, started playing, we started with Team Deathmatch. And every single mode in this game has this magnetic field that eventually closes in and makes the map smaller. But these maps are already small enough as it is, especially for a third person shooter, because you've got corner peeking and stuff like that. But the maps get even smaller. Team Deathmatch is more like it moves around, but the bomb defusal, they get smaller, until you get to, like, it closes in for the first time, gives you zone two. The second time it closes in, you're in a really, really small area all set around the bomb. But Team Deathmatch absolutely sucks. You get knocked down, and when you are knocked down, you can still roll around. You can still shoot with a pistol. And not only that, if you're playing bomb defusal, you can still plant and defuse the bomb when you're in a down state which makes no fucking sense at all. The movement and the controls and stuff in this game are really janky, they're clunky, it's horrible to play. But Team Deathmatch is awful. It's not even based on kills, it's based on a score system. And the score goes up to 120. And it's just, it's not an enjoyable experience whatsoever. Plus, I've also heard there's quite a few hackers that have been found in the game. So, like, the anti-cheat in this PvP game is basically non-existent, which is already a red flag even for a free-to-play game. And I've seen a lot of people bashing the publisher in the, uh, like, reviews and stuff for it because this game is published by Nexon. And I believe they gave a cease and desist to a game that was made called Dark and Darker. They didn't let it get released, basically started up a law suit saying that the game had stolen property or, or something like that i don't know the ins and outs but then you load up this game and it feels like a mixed match of like loads of different games out there but the one that stands out the most and it feels as though they've stolen quite a few ideas from is rogue company so they're hypocritical because they don't want anyone stealing their assets and ideas and stuff yet they're happy to go out and steal from a bunch of different games the ideas and everything and just chuck it all into one but yeah this game only has three different modes and the three 3v3 bomb defusal is by far the most enjoyable one but it still sucks because you basically get like x-ray vision in this game they put systems in place to try and stop camping being the magnetic field which is a battle royale feature and they've also got scan grenades you chuck this grenade it sends off this pulse and it gives you a massive red highlight and shows you exactly where the enemies are however players are still camping in this game they're still finding ways to camp in this video game and it's also taken quite a bit from CSGO as well. Because it doesn't matter if you're playing TDM, if you're playing the bomb defusal mode, at the start of every single round, you have a shop. You go into the shop, you buy your guns. The first round, you start with a pistol, 
you make two grand for round completion or whatever and after that you can then buy an ar or an smg or you can get a sniper or something like that and not only that for a game of this style it's got the longest loading times i've ever seen and they put out an update saying that they had fixed a load of stuff like to do with matchmaking yeah no it still takes well over like two minutes to uh, actually find the game when there's like 4,000 people concurrently playing. And I saw people saying that they had 10 minute waits when there were 10,000 concurrent players. But another weird thing is, I believe this game launched at 5 p.m. UK time on the 18th of May. And I was going to play this game with Lewis. I, I did eventually get around to playing with Lewis, but we had to wait a whole extra day because they released it at 5 p.m. and they didn't open the servers until 4 a.m. the following morning. So they released the game in early access and 11 hours later, you were actually able to play the game. So that's already ridiculous within itself. But as I said, there's just so much stupid stuff in this game. Like, if you are in a down state, you are downed. Why the fuck are you able to still go around planting and defusing bombs, shooting people, and rolling? You can combat roll in a down state. And not only that, you have shoulder switching. I didn't think it was in the game like at first, but I managed to find it. It's left all on your keyboard. You have shoulder switching, but you have shoulder firing. So you hold down your right mouse button and it's just your typical like ADS in a third person shooter. But it's not anything like that because the weapons are so inaccurate when you are firing from the shoulder. The best way I've found to kill people in this game is to tap your right mouse button and go into a full on ADS. There were a few gunfights where I was maybe two feet, like two or three feet away from the enemy. And it felt like I was 250 yards away from a barn door trying to hit it with a fucking LMG. Like the amount of spray from close is stupid. The TTK is also terrible in this game. Sometimes you kill people really, really fast and other times you just don't. It's so inconsistent. And the maps, well, the, the maps are horrible. And when you're playing bomb defusal, your lanes, like there's pretty much no lanes at all. And the maps are tiny as well, but they are so narrow. Some of the maps they give you, some of the areas, because for some of the maps, you'll have the entire map, but your playing area will be tiny. It's really, really small. I would say, think of a typical small sort of... Think of Nuketown from Call of Duty. That's a really like popular map. A lot of players, play shooters, know about that map. Think of Nuketown, but make it... 20 25 percent smaller and i get it it's a 3v3 bomb defusal you've got really small maps but it's so stupid and the fact that it's third person as well chuck all of that together and you've got this game they've also chucked in this uh parkour system you can climb up walls and stuff and it's just a really really bad feature because there's one map that me and lewis played in the 3v3 bomb defusal mode and this map you just like if you was on the defending team you would just climb on top of the roof that's in the middle of the map and you've got the high ground you've got the advantage over the enemy every single time pretty much the only way you're going to lose a gunfight is if you're trying to cover one side and an enemy flanks and climbs up behind you other than that there's not really a way to lose a gunfight when you're sat on that roof so yeah there are so many poor poor features in this game it really is not worth wasting the time it would take to download this game and load it up low times are awful matchmaking times are horrible it took 11 hours for them to bring the servers online you can roll and plant and diffuse and stuff when you're in a down state the maps are tiny there's a wheat field and you can't even see like pretty much anything on that map the wheat just covers everything it's an absolute disgrace of a release i really don't think this game will go anywhere my recommendation is to steer well clear of it do not play this game if you are looking for a game of this style and you want to have fun just go and play rogue company rogue company is a million times better than this game easily this game is awful and i don't say that lightly like i really did not enjoy my time with this game i had the like smallest amount of fun playing on the 3v3 because it was a lot more strategic in terms of me and lewis communicating and taking down enemies with call outs and stuff and just very quickly before the end you can trade in this game so you can shoot someone they shoot you and you both go down at the same time and it's kind of like a standoff to see who can pistol the other one first and not only that in bomb defusal having played multiple matches i barely ever saw the bomb get planted or what they call the seed and that is probably because there is a 50 second timer for the bomb in this game so the enemy team has 50 seconds to get to that bomb and defuse it 
Plus, there's also a gadget you can purchase in the shop at the beginning of the round, which will let you defuse even faster. And without that, it's only taken about 10 seconds to defuse. So to actually plant the bomb, destroy the objective and win that way is uh yeah not balanced in the slightest and one more thing to note before we wrap this one up this game has launched without any controller support whatsoever so you are playing a third person free-to-play shooter that has no controller support at launch i don't even know if they ever plan to bring it into the game in my recommendation do not play veiled experts it's a horrible horrible title and on that note, we are going to leave the video there. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like is appreciated. If you wish to support me further as a creator, there are links in the description. Let me know your thoughts about the video in the comments. And if you want to watch more, you can click the video on screen. All support on the channel is greatly appreciated, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.